What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dollar Mike back at it again with another video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about some solid, solid, solid dividend investments, some solid inflation proof investments to go forward in the year of 2022 with all the inflation stuff going on right now with Omicron, with the supply chain issues. It's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the market right now. But either way, these solid investments, these four different stocks I'm going to mention in today's video should hold you over for 2022 and beyond because they're just great investments in general. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into the video. Let's go. <laughs> If you're new around here, I make videos talking all about personal finance. That means saving your money, investing your money, budgeting, credit, credit cards. It's all covered right here on the channel, Dollar Mike. So if you're interested in stuff like that, make sure that like button, hit that subscribe button, and check out the links down below because the links down below will get you some free stuff. Either way, let's talk about the first stock on this list today. And I talked about this stock all last year and the previous year when I first initially invested into it. But the first stock on this list today, which is a dividend king, so that means they've been paying the dividend out for over 50 years continuously. This is Procter & Gamble, ticker symbol PG. As I mentioned before, Procter & Gamble is a dividend king and the current dividend yield is 2.12%. Pretty solid, pretty safe, nothing wrong with that. And it's also inflation proof when it comes to the actual company and stock, of course. Procter & Gamble owns over 30 different pretty much household brands and you can't really go wrong with any of them people are going to buy these products no matter what no matter what the price is whether the price is going up whether the price is coming down whether it's a pandemic going on outside people generally always need these products and let's list some of them right here but they cover diapers for your baby when it comes to the brands like pampers loves charlie banana and all good laundry detergent to of course clean your clothes with era gain and tide toothpaste with brands like crust scope and oral b medicine like vix align and zequo and of course the holy grail to make the world even function toilet paper Either way, Procter & Gamble owns all these different brands. They own over 60 different brands, so they own even more than the ones I just mentioned here, but those are just some of the top picks. Inflation, where we should expect to see a lot of in the year of 2022, will increase the prices of these products, but that doesn't mean people are going to magically stop buying these products. These are household name brands. People are going to buy these products no matter what, even if they cost a dollar more. It, it doesn't matter. It just is what it is, and that's why Procter & Gamble is one of the greatest stocks that you can inve be invested in long term and definitely be invested in during an inflation time or any other time to be completely honest well, currently Procter & Gamble is sitting at a stock price of $162.75 as I'm recording this video and if we scroll down we can see my position on it overall I'm up about 21% I have about 5.34 shares of Procter & Gamble with only plans to buy even more so there you guys go let's move on over to the second stock that'll beat inflation coming this year in 2022 this second stock is also a dividend king they've been paying that dividend out for over 50 years plus and they've been very consistent with it this stock is ticker symbol low or lows and their dividend yield currently is about 1.26 percent of course lows and home depot did great during the pandemic since everyone was stuck at home pretty much focused on making new home improvement projects and with those omicron fears still lingering around i can see the stock price still has a little bit of upside going into the year 2022 and throughout all of 2022 uh, people also mention a lot more lockdown stuff which i don't think we're going to go into another lockdown but honestly you never know i think i think i'm not saying we're fine because we're not fine but i just don't think we're going to go into another lockdown but if we did then i could see the stock price going even higher yet again regardless there's still plenty of people working from home and i think the inflation could kind of go either way with this stock but overall i think this stock will still be a very safe investment in 2022 on top of that, even before the pandemic, Lowe's as well as Home Depot also pretty much created solid dividend growth as well as year over year growth in their sales. So there's no issue there. We go and check Lowe's stock right now. It's sitting at $251.09 a share right now. And if we scroll down, I have about 5.31 shares overall up about 40 42% since I originally invested. If we go and look at the five year chart for that, they're overall up 250% in the past five years. Let's go and look at Home Depot real quick because you can really pick either one of these. I just personally like Lowe's a little bit more, but you can pick either one. Home Depot sitting at 393 a share right now. I don't currently have any position with Home Depot. And we go look at the five year chart for them. They're up over 191%. This is insane numbers. I think they'll be very consistent going forward in the future, no matter what really happens. These are very safe investments. And yeah, that's all I got to say on both of these. But the third stock that I want to mention today is a dividend aristocrat. 
that means they've been paying that dividend out consistently for over 25 years plus it's not a dividend king so it's not 50 years plus but 25 years is still a very long time to consistently pay a dividend out and be on top of it every single time that stock currently has a 5.27 percent dividend yield which is honestly i think pretty high when you compare it to the rest of the market and overall very high when it comes to the gr some of the greatest stocks that you can invest in on, on the market right now. Overall though, that stock is ticker symbol XOM and that stands for Exxon Mobil. Being an oil and gas company should help during an inflationary time simply because this provides a hedge against the market considering this didn't run like the rest of the market did in late 2020 leading up to now. People will continuously say that oil has no future and I generally do agree with that but the problem is the whole electric future or natural gas future or all this whatever type of future we're pushing for seems like electric right now whatever type of future future we're pushing for right now isn't going to change overnight and the oil and gas industry or just the oil industry in general isn't going anywhere overnight this electric industry is great it's great for the planet it's great for everyone we save money you know we live better all that kind of good stuff but it doesn't change overnight i can expect oil oil and gas to be just fine Exxon stock to be just fine for the next 10 years and just be all good to go. Now, 20, 30, 40 years out, we'll have to reconsider Exxon. But for right now, I see no reason with Exxon and I don't understand that argument in the sense of I'm not going to buy Exxon stock now. I just don't think that's good. I think it's a solid investment right now. And then maybe look back, like I said, 10, 20 years from now, we'll see how things play out and past that time we'll definitely see how things play out as far as the future that we're going towards. But for the time being, especially this year and the next couple of years, I think ExxonMobil would be just fine. It provides a great investment and also provides consistent high paying dividends, which is just great in itself. You don't get this from a stock that's in the S&P 500 with this much of a yield that often. So take it when you can get it. Like it's, it's, it's essentially free money. As of recording this video, ExxonMobil is trading at 68.87 a share right now. We scrolled down, I have about 20.5 shares of ExxonMobil and I'm up nearly 50%. That's just me. I'm just saying, if I put a lot more in, then I'll be up a lot more, but 50%, that's a great return in general. And I think it'll be a great return throughout 2022 and a little bit beyond as well for the next like i said at least 10 years i'd say exxon is still pretty solid up an investment with that dividend payout of about five percent come on it's kind of a no-brainer to be honest the fourth and final stock that i have for you guys today is really an industry this is pretty much the financial industry or the banking industry what you would do here is, is you would go and invest in whatever bank that you actually use so if you guys use bank of america as your primary bank then i would say buy some bank of america stock if you use ally i love ally same thing go and buy some ally stock chase go and buy some chase stock wells fargo I don't, I'm not a fan of Wells Fargo. Do whatever you want to do with that. I'm just personally not a fan. You could buy it. I think it's probably going to do okay, but I don't like Wells Fargo. But that's the whole point. Invest in the whatever bank you actually own. All of these banking stocks hover around a 2% dividend yield, which is pretty solid. And it's also a great investment to make when it comes to inflationary times. Simply put, higher interest rates, which we should be receiving a lot of this year, pretty much means higher mortgage rates. It means higher credit card rates. It means higher auto loan rates. It means higher personal loan rates, et cetera, et cetera. It goes on and on. It's a trickle down system. So overall with those rates being higher and the banks giving those rates out, obviously the banks are gonna make more money because of the higher interest rate and therefore the financials of the bank should do pretty well. Banks are generally a solid investment during inflationary times and a terrible investment when it comes to a recession. It's also just naturally better to actually have your money invested with the bank that you actually bank with instead of having your money in a savings account with the bank that you actually bank with because that savings account bank rate, I'm pretty sure it's pretty terrible. That's how most banks in America work. They're all pretty terrible interest rates right now so you're not getting any solid APY on your money, it'll be better off invested. Now, when it's out of that investment stage and we enter that recession and interest rates go back up or the APY rate goes back up, then you can go put it back in a savings account or just store it somewhere else where your money isn't at that much risk or you can make more money off of it without doing too much with it. But that's a whole separate video. If you guys want to know where to store your savings, I made a video going over that seven different places to store your savings besides your bank account because that's probably one of the worst places you can have your money stored. I made a video about it. Check it out. It'll be linked right up there. But regardless, let's go on over to the Robinhood app and we're going to open up some of the banks that I mentioned before. So let's go to Bank of America. Let's check that one out first. Let me load up Bank of America, ticker symbol BAC, if you didn't know. Currently, Bank of America is sitting at about $49 a share right now. We're going over the past three months, up about 10%. Past year, up about 50%. People have been buying Bank of America all last year because I think people know that we're going to have to increase interest rates 
at some point and it looks like that's what we're gonna have to do so i expect them to go up even further i currently don't own any more bank of america shares but i do have the other two that i mentioned which is ally we go and click on ally have about 14 shares of ally currently also sitting around 49 dollars a share scroll down on ally i'm up, I'm up about 23 percent total we go look at the past year up about 33 percent all the one i mentioned was jp morgan chase ticker symbol jpm let's go and type that in I have 6.66 shares of JPM dividend coming in on January 31st. I'm overall up about 16%. If we go look out, look at how JP Morgan Chase did last year, overall up about 23%. Looks like solid stuff to me. Let's go and do one more, even though I don't really recommend you buy Wells Fargo because I don't like Wells Fargo, but whatever. Ticker symbol WFT. Um, overall, $54 a share right now. They're all hovering around the same price. It's kind of interesting, besides Chase, of course. And we go look at the yearly chart up about 63 percent either way i don't like wells fargo i didn't invest in wells fargo as you can see but i, I missed out on 63 percent of a gain if i if i invested in them last year so yeah that's just saying i'm just saying that's an option for you banking investments during inflationary times are great investments to make and it's just that simple but there you guys go that is some top stocks that you can invest into to combat inflation in the year of 2022 and possibly be possibly beyond we'll see how this inflation things plays out all of this year but it'll be interesting to see and those are some great stocks to take care of it for you if you want to see more content like this then make sure you like the video hit that subscribe button and check out the links down below the links down below will get you tons of free stuff you already know the deal also check out the comments down below if you have any questions and i can respond to those and we can have a whole conversation down there talking about other inflationary stocks to buy to combat inflation in 2022 so there you guys go take care of yourselves stay safe i'm out dollar mike peace